Alice Chapter 5, Lesson 7, Alien with Loop. Today's lesson is going to have you work with a while or indefinite loop. So we're still working with looping control structures that we started the chapter with, but we're going to be, be moving forward to indefinite loops versus count loops. Let's do a quick review. Remember, a control structure is a statement that determines the order to execute programming instructions. Alice has many different control structures that you can use. We learned earlier in this chapter about loops. A loop is one type of control structure and it lets you repeat code without putting in the instruction multiple times. So without the loop, I might have to do several moves. With the loop, I can do it once and I'm just going to loop or repeat it the number of times I need to. Now in our first few lessons, we used the count. So we knew how many times before the loop started that the loop needed to be repeated. But today we're going to talk about indefinite loops, which are loops that are going to repeat, but we don't know in advance how many times. So when the program starts and I click on the loop, it might run two times, three times, five times. I don't know because it's going to be determined by conditions that are happening in the world as the program is running. So I don't know in advance. Even when the program is running, I don't know how many times it might take. This is also known as a conditional loop and it's going to continue while the condition is true and exit when the condition is false. This is often used with random motion and we're going to do this today in our lesson. The while loop is the one structure in Alice that lets you do indefinite loops and we'll find it at the bottom with the other control structures. So let's also remember what the process flow looks like for repetition. Process flow is a visual representation of what's going on and we use particular symbols to represent different things. We have a diamond to represent a condition, if statements have conditions, and loops also have conditions. So I've got a diamond here, I've got two, two branches, I've got true and I've got false. So we're going to, hopefully the condition is true when we first get started. When you come to the true path and do whatever the instructions are, then I'm going to loop back to the condition, I'm going to check the condition again. If it's still true, I keep going. I'm just going to keep looping and things can be going on in my Alice world that could make the condition true or sooner or later the condition will be false. I'm going to head out, I stop the loop and I go to any instructions that follow the loop and there I go. Now if I get stuck in here and the condition is never false, it's always true, that's called an infinite loop and that's something that you usually want to avoid. We've seen the process flow for the wolf eating the chicken. It's going to be, here's our loop, our true part. As long as the distance is large, I'm going to move forward. I keep moving forward. When the wolf gets close to the chicken, then I eat it. Now you might have done this reverse. You might have had if the distance is less than, you're going to eat the chicken, and true, you move forward, or false, you move forward. That's perfectly fine with an if statement. For a while loop, we want it to be like this. So you might have to make some minor adjustments in your code. And today we're going to learn how to take this process flow and make it into code like this. Let's take a look at the process flow for our actual lesson today, Alien with Loop. We're going to go back to the program you did in Chapter 4, where you had an alien fall into a hole. Here's our process flow. I've got my condition right here. If alien's distance to the hole is large, larger than 0.5, it's true. I'm going to turn to face the hole and move forward. I'm going to keep this loop going as long as the distance is greater than 0.5. When he's close enough, I'm going to end the loop. I'm going to fall in and then end my program. We're going to translate this into actual code. Okay, let's get started. You need to start Alice and you need to open your own Alien Fallen program, which is Chapter 4, Lesson 7. Now, if you're not sure if you can use this program, maybe if you think your coding is a little skiwumpus, or if you didn't finish this program from some, for some reason, you can alternately open the Chapter 5, Lesson 7 program from the backpack, which is also Alien Fallen. I do want to caution you that if you open this and you're using my code, then you cannot turn it in for Chapter 4. So if you did Chapter 4, Lesson 7, and you want to use your own code, go for it. But if you're not sure, or you already have credit for Chapter 4, Lesson 7, you want to open this program and follow along, 
um, that's perfectly fine. You can use either one. It's the same program, so either the one that I do the code or you do the code, we'll all be working together. Once you open the program, if it's your own, you want to change um, the, the name of the program from Chapter 4 to Chapter 5. And if it's you're opening this one, then put your name in. So you want the comment block at the top to have the correct information. You want to save it. So if it's yours, certainly do a save as. So you have the old program and you'll have the new program. And then you're going to follow the rest of the steps in this video lecture to complete the program and make it a loop instead of an if statement. So pause this video lecture if you need to to get all these steps done. And we're going to do start with step one. We're going to create a scene level procedure for putting it all together. You might have done this already, having a procedure with the if statement, and you're checking a condition in the world to determine if you're going to move forward or if you're going to fall in. You might have created it at the biped level. You might not have created this procedure yet because you might have just done the whole if statement in the in the event. If any of these are the case, you're going to need to change your code just a little bit. We're going to create a scene level procedure to put it all together, and we're going to use two, param two parameters. Let's just get into Alice and see what I'm talking about, and we'll be moving. So here's the Alien Fallen program. I'm going to run it. And remember, I should have to click several times, at least twice, and hopefully several times, before he actually falls in. I've got my if statement going. It just moves forward a little bit each time until finally he falls in. Now for the code right now, we come to biped, you'll see I've got walk to, where he turns to face the hole. I do have a parameter, and he moves forward just a little bit. I also have the fall in, where he turns forward and then moves forward. And then I also have a walk or fall in. So there's, this is my procedure that puts it all together. I've got my if statement, and I use distance too. Many of you might have used colliding with, and that's fine too. Whatever condition you have here, you can keep it, or you can change it. If you do have is colliding with, and fall in, and then walk to, you want to change that, because you do want to have this in this particular order. So you want to have not colliding with, the true part will be walk to, and the false part will be fall in. If you need to make this change, go ahead and do so. In our event listener, we have a mouse click, and you might have used a key press. That's fine too. Whichever type of event you use will be will work. I did mine for a mouse click on the alien, and see, instead of having an if statement here, I'm calling my procedure. So once again, if you're using your own program and you put an if statement here, you'll want to put that into a procedure instead. And we will do this together. We'll be moving some code. So whether you move it from here or you move it from a procedure, we're going to create a scene level procedure to do the walk or fall in instead of having it at the biped level. And we'll talk about the reason for doing this in just a second. But take a look at the code that you have. And if you need to make a change so that the true part is walking, and the false part is falling in, then make that change. Now we're going to create the procedure at the scene level. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go to scene, and I'm going to add a scene procedure. I'm still going to call it walk or fall in, because that's what we're going to be doing, walking or falling in. And it can be confusing to have two procedures with the same name when they're in different places. So I will eventually delete this one so I do not get confused. So I've got a scene level procedure. Now the reason that I'm changing it from a biped level to a scene level is because we're going to be interacting with more than one object. So I'm going to be doing something with the alien, but I'm also going to be doing something with the disk. And if I keep it biped, I can't access the disk's procedures. So if I want to make this more globally acceptable where I can work with anything in my world, then I will need to make it scene level. So that's what we're going to do. And since I'm going to be interacting with two objects, the alien and the disk, I'm going to use two parameters. I'm going to start with the who, which is my alien. 
So its type is going to be biped. And I'm going to create a what for the disk. I'm going to do another parameter called what, and it is the type of disk. So since I have two different, completely different types of objects, they're not in the same superclass, I'm going to have two parameters, and this is also why I'm creating it at the scene level. I'm going to start there. I'm going to find the code that I already have. So the code could be in your click or key press event, or it could be in a procedure, but somewhere you have an if statement like this. So wherever you have it, we're going to take it and drag it to the clipboard. I'm going to come to my new scene level procedure and I'm going to drag it from the clipboard into my new procedure. Now, of course, the computer's gone all red here. It's got flags up. Wait, 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 wait. That's because it's no longer referring to the same things anymore. I don't have, it's not in biped, so I have to tell it. So this is my who. I'm going to drag who for every this. And the whole is my what. So I'm just going to drag this. And now the computer is happy. Everything has worked. So my alien, I'm going to compare the distance from the alien to the disk. And the alien is going to walk to the disk or it's going to fall in. So I've just taken this code and I've changed it from a class level to a scene level. Now I don't need this one anymore. But before I can delete it, I have to take it out of my event. So I'm going to click back here on my event. I'm going to take this line of code that my procedure call, and I'm going to trash it. Now if I'm here at my scene level, I can see my new walk or fall in with my who or my what. And this is what I'm going to drag inside my click event. My this, my who is my alien. And my what is my disk. So I can just click on those two. It only gave me those two choices. Now everything is good. If I run it, it should work exactly the same as if I didn't change the procedure at all. Okay, there we go. Now that I have this all changed over, I do want to delete this extra procedure so I don't get confused with anything. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to close it by clicking on the X. I can click here on biped where it says walk or fall in. I can come over here and I can delete it. Okay. I'm going to keep my walk to and my fall in. They can stay biped. They're working perfectly fine. The only thing I really want to concern myself with is the walk or fall in, the one that has the condition. I need to make the scene level and I need my two parameters, everything is good. So we can run it again, test it, make sure everything was working correctly, that my true part is walking and my false part is falling. And once you have this working correctly, we've finished step one. Okay, let's go to step two. This one is a fairly simple step. You've done this a few times now. We're gonna create another mouse event for moving the objects around. So remember, there's not really any code to it. I just have to drag it up. The one that says add default model manipulation. So you've done this many times before. Go ahead and go back into your code. We're here in our code and we're going to come to our event listeners and I just need to add it. Now what does this do? It's kind of like you did this for your wolf and chicken program. Now I can move the hole around, so when I run it, I'm going to go ahead and click on my alien, but I can move the hole closer, I can move it further away, I can like play little tricks on the alien here, so he thinks he's going to the hole, and all of a sudden the hole is someplace else, until I stop moving it around and he falls in. So this just kind of will give it more of a game-like feel that you can move things around and put kind of a, a similar to some randomization. When you get this working, then you've done step number two. So you've added this event. Let's go to step three. Now we've got everything working for the if statement. 
We're going to change it to a while. We're going to do an indefinite loop. So I only have to click once. Right now you saw I had to click several times, which is the way I wanted you to set it up. We're going to change it, just a slight change of hand with the code from an if to a while. So I click once to put it all in motion and the computer will do the rest. So we're going to modify our scene level procedure by changing the if statement to a while. I'm going to drag in the correct code for inside or the true part, drag in the code for the outside or the false part, and we're going to test and debug. So I'm back here in Alice. I've got my walker fall in. I'm going to click on this procedure. This is where the if statement is. I'm going to keep this here for now because I'm going to do some dragging, but I'm going to need a while loop. So let's go to the bottom. Let's drag up our while loop, and you can put it underneath or on top. I'm going to put mine on top and always pick true. So I've got my while loop set up here, and I want to have basically the same condition. So if you have a is not colliding with, you can do that. Or if you want to try a distance too, you can try this one now as well. So I'm going to click here to do the distance when I need relational decimal number, and I'm going to use greater than. And then you pick any two numbers because they're placeholders and you can change them. Now that I've got a number here, I can change it to the function. So I'm going to click on my alien and I'm going to click on the function so I can use the get distance too. And I can drag this right up here. And I want the distance to the disk. Now I can use the who and the what. Okay. So I've got those parameters. Now what do I want to happen if the distance is larger? I want to walk to, so I can just take this code and put it right there. This is my true part. The walk to does include a turn to face. If it didn't, I'd want to put it up here. So I'm going to turn to face and walk forward. Walk to does both of these. If you're not sure, you can take a look. Now if your walk to is different, then make sure that you do include a turn to face inside your loop. Now what do I want to happen if this is false when the distance is less? I want to fall in. I'm just going to put it here underneath the loop like this. So I've got a true part that loops and the false part is underneath. So it's a little different from the else, which is all part of the structure. The false part is not part of the structure, it's after it. Now I don't have anything in my if statement anymore. I am ready to trash it. You've just changed your if to a while. We're going to test this again, and this time I should click one time on the alien and it should go to the hole. And if I move the hole around, it should still kind of chase it. Let's give it a try. So one click, and there he goes. And now if I move the hole, you should adjust. I'm playing this little trick on the alien here. And then when I stop moving it, it'll fall in. Okay, so test your program, get this to work, then you've completed step number three. Now we're going to do one more step. We're going to add in some random motion. This will make it more game-like. So it's not really a game, but many games do have some kind of random motion in them. And so we're going to start learning how to do that with this program. We're going to have the disk, the hole, move randomly, even though that might not really happen. We're going to make it happen for our poor little alien. We're going to use a do together and two move statements with random numbers. And we're going to add this procedure call to our, to our while loop and test and debug. So here we are in Alice, and what we want to do is add a new procedure for our disk. And it's only going to affect the disk, so I can actually do it at the disk level. Just like when I did my walk to and my fall in were at the biped level because it only affected the biped, this one's only going to affect the disk. So when I create the procedure, I'm going to come here to disk and I'm going to add a disk procedure. Let's call it move randomly. We're going to use a do together. And I'm going to use two move statements because this is pretty much how it works. I'm going to click back on my procedures here. I'm going to do a move. And notice when it comes to the directions, I can do left, right, which is basically one way, but one could be positive or negative. So if I have, if I just say move left and I pick a positive number, it's going to move left. 
But if I say move left and I pick a negative number, it actually moves right. So with just one command, my disk could move left or right. Same thing with up and down, but my hole really shouldn't be moving up. So I'm not going to have one for this. Move forward, backward. If I have a positive number, it moves forward. A negative number moves backward. So I don't have to do four different moves. I can just do two, one for both of these and one for both of these. So I'm going to pick left and just pick any number. And I'm going to do the same thing for forward, backward. I'm going to pick forward and just any number. Now I'm going to change these two numbers to be random. I'm going to click here on random, and I'm going to pick the first one, a number in range. And you can see that they're decimal. It's perfect. Okay. Now I want the first number to be negative. And I also want it to move less than what the uh, alien moves. If it moves a lot, then it can outrun the alien, basically. My alien is moving by 0.5. I might make that adjustment a little bit. You can see walking too. Maybe I make this a little bit bigger. Um, maybe 0.75 or even up to 1 if you'd like. So the disk is going to, need, going to need to move less than this. Okay, so for my random number, I'm going to do like maybe up to 0.3. So the top number is going to be custom 0.3. And the bottom number, the first one, is going to be negative 0.3. So just go ahead and type in that little negative. So my range is negative 0.3 to positive 0.3. So it can either go to the left or to the right. I'm going to do the same thing right here. So I'm going to pick random, the first one. And then I'm going to change the first number to a negative. 0.3, which means it would go backwards, to a positive 0.3, go forwards. So it's going to pick two random numbers and then move in that direction. So it could be left and forward, it could be right and forward, left backward, and left um, backward, right backward. So it can be kind of going diagonally, depends. This would be really cool. I need to call this procedure somewhere, and I actually want to call it my walk or fall in. So just before the alien walks, I want my hole to move. I'm going to click on the disk so I see this procedure right here. And I'm going to drag it to just before walk to. So this is why I needed to make this a scene level. So I could include procedures for the disk and procedures for the alien. So I'm going to move the disk have the alien walk to it, and then just keep testing to see the distance. So I'm going to loop this, loop this, loop this, until the alien manages to get close to the hole, and he will fall in. Let's give this a try. So I have to do one click. You see how the disc moved? Moves a little bit, moves a little bit more. So I've got some random motion. And just the important thing to remember is that the random motion should always be a little bit less, and how the, the character is moving forward. Otherwise, it might not be able to catch up. Now, a fun thing about this is we did keep in the moving part. So not only is it going to move randomly, but I can choose to move it if I want as well. So it's going to move and go and move and go. But then if I want to keep this going along, I can move it again. Or if it's going too long, I just say, hey, yep, go up to the alien. There we go. So test your program, make sure that your random numbers work properly so that the alien will catch up to the disk eventually. When you have everything working correctly, you have finished step four. If you're ready to finish up, test your code many times with different ways. So just because it works once doesn't mean it's perfect. Test it several times. When everything is working correctly, you're ready to save your program and turn it in the backpack for a grade. Make sure you're paying attention to each step and that you understand what's happening because the next program is going to be similar to this, but I'm not going to walk you through it in Alice. I'm just going to give you the directions. You're going to have to complete the program on your own.